talk about some general things, then we'll get in the material and examine it. 21 volumes with references to more than 50 other volumes. First of all, I want to talk to you about the similarities between the good angels in the Bible, the angel of the Lord, angel of the Lord, not the fallen angels. The Bible always gives two kinds. I mean, the fellow who wrote the book called Gods and Devils from Outer Space had a more scriptural approach than the other 20 volumes. But the good angels, or God's angels in the Bible, do have five things in common with the occupants of the flying saucers and cigar-shaped objects that people have professed to have seen. Number one, the angels in the Bible, the angels of the Lord and the angel of the Lord, number one, professes to have higher knowledge than man. Number two, they profess to have endless life as created spirits. Number three, they give messages. Number four, they promote peace or give announcements of judgment. And number five, they are connected at times with fire, clouds, flying, landing, and ascending. However, there are some outstanding dissimilarities which you will not stand to be listed. After all, when you begin to list things that are different, you must be put against the firing before the firing squad because the entire movement of modern education and science is to eliminate differences. The entire movement of modern science and education is what we call in the nut house insanity. And this comes from assuming that number one, wars come from differences. If you can eliminate differences, you can eliminate war. So the entire movement of the United Nations which has started 54 wars since World War II. <laughs> Excellent record. <laughs> the United Nations' purpose and the plan of the colleges in America is to insist that men are the same as women, young people the same as old people, children are adults, adults are children, black people are white, and white people are black. And if you can't prove this, then you force it to be so by what we call indiscriminate adulteration, or the more acceptable term used by the Associated Press, integration. <laughs> See how it's done? It's done by the positive approach. You never deceive a man with a negative approach. You deceive him with a positive approach. You tell him, this isn't race mixing, it's integration. See, that's how you do it. You don't say, this is the destruction of womanhood. You say, this is women's lib, liberation. You see how it's done? When you get ready to put Cuba under a fascist dictator who's a Roman Catholic, you don't say that it's a fascist dictator. You say that he liberated Cuba. You see how it's done? When you want to take the colored man and bury him in the ghetto in Philadelphia and Cleveland and Detroit and expose him to the drug culture and uh, poverty, and rats and disease, and brutal assault, mugging, rape, torture, killing, and death, you call it the Emancipation Proclamation. You see how it's done? Well, it's never been done any differently, friend. You're just late waking up. I'm going to list now the dissimilarities between the angels of God, the angel of the Lord, and what these people are contacting from outer space. That is, I'm going to show you the difference so as to create friction. I'm going to show you the difference so as to split your group. You see? That is, I'm going to do what the Word of God does. Draw a clear, straight line between truth and falsehood. And men who do that have been known to be kidnapped, Jeremiah, thrown in jail, Micaiah, have their heads cut off, Paul, and several of them been known to be nailed to a piece of wood without the clothes on. All right, here are the dissimilarities. Number one, no angel of God or angels in the Bible is ever concerned with power supplies. Our UFO dear brothers from outer space, our dear sky brothers, 
are awfully concerned about sources of power, as we'll see in a minute. That's a strange thing. You never met an angel in your life concerned about sources of power. The angel of the Lord killed 185,000 men in one night, didn't have to go to a reservoir or a power plant to plug in the tweeter woofer system to anything. You need an outlet, a power supply, a transformer, an alternating current, or nothing. And when the angel of the Lord struck down Herod in Acts chapter 12, did you think he had to find a source of power? Now here is a tremendous gap between these birds who come down in UFOs and angels. And you'd better get it. There is an angel in that Bible concerned about your power supply. Number two, no angel in the Bible, as far as the record is concerned, ever wasted time asking any human being a lot of questions about human beings. Our UFO friends seem to be rather stupid. They come down and take blood samples, according to the witnesses. They come down and take people on board and show them a lot of junk. You don't find angels in the Bible wasting time with that kind of crap. Now, you see the difference between a Bible-believing Christian and a science-worshipping fool? Those of us who believe that book and know the book, we know our differences. After all, when you're born again, you're a new creature. Why shouldn't you be able to tell the difference? Number three, no angel in the Bible ever said anything or did anything that contradicted any verse in the Bible. Our UFO friends seem to be kind of uh, anti-biblical, talking about we're coming down to help you. Why, you don't read anything in that Bible about before the second advent of Jesus Christ, angels coming down to help folks find a way to peace. What you talking about, baby? The three biggest wars on this earth are in the future. If our UFO friends from outer space are angels, they're about the stupidest mutts that ever hit the boards. They're going to bring in three world wars. According to the Bible. Now, you, do you, are, are, you, are you oriented yet? It isn't difficult to stay with this. Sound doctrine is there's a tremendous war that kills a third part of this earth following the rapture in Revelation 6. Read it. There is a second world war that cleans out the Gentile powers at the advent of Christ in Revelation 19. Read it. There is a third world war of Gog and Magog at the end of the millennium in Revelation 20. Read it. You can read. What are you waiting for some jackrabbit to show up from Venus and Mars for when God put the thing right in your lap on a dime store counter? Now, if our UFO brothers from outer space, the serpent or sky people, as we'll see from the evidence, are such hot shots at helping us out, how come they make the biggest bamboozle any bunch of people ever made? <clears throat> According to the Word of God, they're getting us ready for three world wars. Pretty rotten intelligence, wouldn't you say? Now, you see the difference? Some of you say people listening to this tape are just about ready to chew your arm off. You're so mad. And the reason why is you don't have the sense that God gave to a brass monkey. You don't really believe that book. You just believe that book where it encourages you or comforts you or speaks positively. And where that book speaks negatively, you have no more use for it than you do a dead horse. <clears throat> 